Hey crafty friends, it's Katya. This is not going to be your normal tutorial on how to make a card. I'm taking a little time out now to share how I made this um, wooden storage tower for craft distress oxide ink pads because I desperately needed something for myself and I know that there are so many people out there on social media who've used their own plans using foam core that kind of thing I did try that stuff that just doesn't work for me and I definitely wanted something in made out of uh, lumber or wood and I could not find anything that's in my price range and this thought kept popping into my head thinking, I, I know I can do this for pennies on the dollar, much cheaper, if I just build individual storage towers and I don't have a lot of woodworking to do. So I'm not I'm a novice, well, I would say intermediate woodworker, but I knew I could create something um, on a much better price point. So I'm going to try to explain how I did this as best possible. So bear with me because I'm not a, a person who gives great instruction and tutorials on wooden projects, so I'm going to do the best that I can. Um, but if you do have questions, please leave me comments and um, and questions in the section below, and I'm be sh I will be sure to respond to them as quickly as I can. So let me start off by saying that I'm going to just throw this out there. Angel Policy, please don't sell these plans or instructions or any of your finished wooden towers for personal profit. I put quite a bit of work in, thought, process, and um, thinking on how to create this thing, and I love sharing. So if you thrive on seeing measurements written down or following along with a diagram that you can see, um, please see the video description below, and you can purchase the plans for a very small fee, just even cheaper than a price of a cup of coffee at, at, a, at a coffee shop. So consider that too. And then if you build this, please tag me on social media so I can see how yours turned out, okay? And my social media sites are also listed in the video description below. So this craft ink tower came to fruition because I recently asked a group of crafters on a Facebook group called Stamp Junkies how they stored their inks. I wondered if they had created their own out of wood or what they used. And most people came back with responses indicating that they use commercially sold ink storage. And I don't have a problem with those. In fact, I love them. But the price point was a bit high for my liking and I wanted to build, I wanted something that I could completely customize to my needs. So version one was born. And that's what you're looking at right here. And and I used wooden clothespins that I pried apart and then secured the flat side to the to the sides with wooden glue, with wood glue. Then I used a handsaw to chop off the edges after the glue was dry, and I secured the sides to a top and a bottom piece. After I posted these pictures on Facebook, many of you said you'd be interested in seeing how I created it. So after version one, I decided that it needed some tweaking with the spacing in between the ink pads, and I came up with what I thought would be an even better version um, that's lighter and easier to create and is completely customizable. So if you decide to get the plans, you can see how you can create an even bigger storage unit using this concept that is completely customizable and then you can also take it apart and um, readjust it if you need to. So enter version two. I used thinner boards for the sides, um, the same wood for the top and the bottom, but I decided to cut the top and the bottom to the width plus one eighth inch wider on each side for a little bit of wiggle room. And then the wooden dowels are nicer because they're a little bit smaller and narrower and they take up less space and they're super inexpensive to buy. Um, you just have to slice them according to the width of the boards that you're using. So I use this. This is version two. This is a better one. The first tower that I made that used clothespins could hold 17 ink pad store in the storage tower. This one can hold up to 20 with an extra space um, um, on the bottom, which I'll show you in a minute. So here you can see I'm, I'm going down the tower. This is version number two. And if you look, I'm getting a close-up of those wooden dowels. And those are just secured with wooden glue. Nothing big, nothing exciting. But towards the very bottom, you'll notice there's not enough space for me to put one of those extra dowels on either side because there's not enough room for the ink. So I just stack two ink pads on top of each other. Not a big deal. So the wood materials that you're going to need for this project are the poplars, which are going to be the sideboards, and then you're going to need something for the top and the bottom. And it really doesn't matter on what thickness you use, but you can see right here I used 3 quarter inch by 3.5 inches by 12 feet long. So the 12 foot long board is not necessary. You don't need that much, but you just need a couple of pieces that are pretty small. And if you've got a, a woodworker in the family or a handyman, certainly have them help you with this project. Super, super simple and very easy to do. 
So the next thing that you're going to need are the side panels. And you can make it really, really thick or you can make it really thin. The first version I did was a little bit thicker and it's heavier on the wall. But this one is using, the version 2 is using a poplar project board. And you can see here, I bought two pieces of this. Um, at Lowe's for $2.08. I don't know what it's like in your area, um, but just check that you might get them a little less expensive at a lumber yard. Um, but this is what I used for the side panels. And the reason I like this is because it's thin enough and that when you hang it on the wall, it's not super heavy, especially with the dowels. So these are the wooden square dowels that I picked up. I picked up four of them just to be on the safe side, but I really wound up only using three. So you could probably get away with three, but depending on how many towers you want to get or make, you want to definitely get as many as you probably think you would need. So I used a total of 38 uh, 2.5 inch dowels to make one tower. Um, so you can do the math there, um, but you definitely want to get the square dowels, not the round ones, because those are not going to work for this purpose here. And then these were extremely easy to slice using a handsaw. And what I did to make it easy for myself is actually tape these all together, all three or four of the panel or the dowels that I had side by side, and then put them on my handsaw and then just slice them at each length that I needed. So this picture kind of explains, I took the dowels and each pieces that I had left over and cut, I just taped them together making sure one side was completely flush and then I just sliced them all at the same time using some painter's tape to hold them secure like a big white board. I hope that makes sense. So many people who are interested in woodworking have probably heard this measure twice cut um, measure twice cut once and that's the general rule of thumb. So I took my ink pad and I brought it down to what is going to serve as the bottom and the top of the ink pad storage tower and I know that the ink pad it measures three inches wide on either side and I just added one eighth of an inch because I wanted it to have a little tiny bit of wiggle room on both sides but not too much. So that's what I came up with and I just cut that right down the, um, that side of the board. And then for the side panels they are made of poplar and they are measuring at uh, one quarter inch thick by 2.5 inches wide and 24 inches tall. So there's no cutting whatsoever on the side panels and they are going to become the total height of your tower um, for the top and the bottom and the top and the bottom pieces are going to be sandwiched in between these poplar boards. And if you don't wind up getting the plans, you can certainly refer back to the pictures on the very beginning of the video so you can kind of get a visual for what you're, um, how you're going to build it. And then this is the Gorilla Glue that I used. You don't need this particular glue. I know that this one's pretty strong and it's made for wood, so any wood type of glue is going to work. Again, we're not hanging bowling balls from these towers. We're putting ink pads that weigh practically nothing. So you don't have to be too terribly concerned, but definitely used a, a glue that's intended for wood. Okay, so first things first is you are going to secure three pieces all together. So you're going to take one side panel and you're going to take the top and the bottom, put some wood glue down, and then what I used was a nail gun. So essentially you are going to be securing one side panel to the top and the bottom and you're going to keep the top flush to the top of the side panel board and the, the bottom to the bottom of the side panel board. So if you don't have a nail gun or you don't know how to use one of those you can certainly enlist somebody's help um, but certainly you can use screws and um, wood glue as well. I would just recommend that if you do this project to not use nails. That's not going to create a secure bond for the, this project and it's not going to be very stable. I've learned that from learned that the hard way. So if you do this project, either use the nail gun like I'm suggesting here because it provides a very strong hold or definitely use wood screws and glue. So next what you're going to need to do is measure the wooden dowels to match the width of the sideboards, which I know already, already know is two and a half inches. So just cut that measurement uh, two and a half inches for each one of those dowels. Now you can do them all individually, which would take you a really long time, or you can put the painter's tape like I had showed in another picture, put them all together, line them up, and then hold them securely and using your handsaw just chop them and you'll need 38 of these dowels. So now comes the fun part and the reason I'm showing you these paper spacers is because these spacers are going to help you in the long run to go very quickly and to make sure that your work is very even. So I just took three pieces of cardstock and I cut them to two and a half inches wide by 13 sixteenths of an inch tall and that is the spacing I need for each ink pad to 
easily come in and out of each one of those slots. And each one of those spacers is going to help you line up those pieces of wooden dowels um, side by side so you can go in a very quick pattern and get them done very easily. So here is a better example. I have three pieces of my tower assembled. I have one side panel secured to the top and the bottom. So right now you're looking at the top and then I have the spacers in between and I have it laid out where I have all those spacers um, that are uh, spacing each one of my wooden dowels out. Now they're not glued on there. They're just holding as spacers so that when I put the spacer down, I can put a line of glue on each dowel and then secure the dowel down and then move on with the next piece of paper that serves as a spacer. And those are all cut to two and a half inches by 13 sixteenths of an inch high so that I know that each one of my ink pads will fit in there very nicely. So here's an example of what it looks like when the paper spacers are removed. So you can see I have the, the glue all the way down on each one of those dowels securing those dowels in place on one side of the panel. So if you remember at the very beginning I told you that this particular project has a space that's a little bit bigger than 3, 6, 13 sixteenths of an inch in height for each one of the ink pads. There's a little bit of extra space at the bottom. The trick is to make sure that you align both of your panels side by side like I'm showing here and start with your spacers in the correct order. So you want to make sure that one side is identical to the other side with how you place the dowels. So the final step for this project is to make sure you have all of those spacers pulled out of the tower and then simply add glue to the top and the bottom of the sideboard panels or even the base and the, the top and the base and simply add some glue and a secure using either your screws and using a drill bit and screws or in my case I actually just used um, glue, wood glue and a nail gun and that is pretty much it. So this is a look at the final tower and I'm getting close-ups here for you so you can kind of see how I put this and assembled it all together. It's not perfect. It needs to be sanded down. It needs to be painted in a color I want. But here, look at the bottom here. This is what I was talking about. And I'll show a still shot here in just a minute. Remember I was telling you with the side panels here, with the way these boards measure out, I didn't have enough room to squeeze in one, uh, two sets of dowels on either side of the panels there because it would have been too tight of a squeeze. So I could just uh, stack two ink pads on top of each other. But if you wanted, you could basically take this concept and make a tower for any type of ink pads that you have, not just the Distress Oxide ink. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me any comments or questions that you have in the video description below, and I would be happy to help answer your questions. I hope you've enjoyed. Have a great crafty day, and have a fabulous weekend. Bye.